we're going to take a look at how two live crews of Sanity Trial made them millionaires and cemented their place in music history. Two Live Crew is a legendary hip-hop group that found mainstream success in the early 1990s. However, it was their obscenity trial in 1990 that really put them on the map. In this video, we're going to take a look at what happened during that trial and how it made them millionaires. Well, guess who this is? <laughs> This is a multi-millionaire and he's going to jail. Before we dive in, please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Your viewership and support helps me to grow and produce high quality content. Thank you. And my channel will be nothing without you. In 1990, two live crews album, as nasty as they want to be, was declared obscene. We want some. This ruling marked the first time in the U.S. that a recorded song had been deemed obscene by the courts. This decision was based on the lyrics being deemed offensive, stating that they didn't have artistic value. If you listen to the lyrics, it's, it's telling a woman she's nothing. When the court made this ruling, it naturally made the entire public want to hear the album, which will play a big role that we'll discuss throughout this video. The controversy surrounding the album also led to several high-profile arrests of store owners and employees for selling the album. One of the most notable cases was that of Charles Freeman. Jury in Florida has convicted a record store owner for selling a sexually explicit album by the rap group Two Live Crew. A Florida jury says the rap group Two Live Crew can't be as nasty as they want to be if they want their records sold in stores. In what's being called a landmark case, the jury convicted a record store owner on obscenity charges. Charles Freeman was arrested in June for selling the album as nasty as they want to be. He insists his arrest violates the First Amendment right of free speech and says his conviction is racially motivated. It doesn't reflect from my community as a black man in the Wild County. It's unfair. The jury was all white. There were no blacks on the jury pool at all, only one. The jury ultimately acquitted Freeman of all charges. Not long after Charles Freeman's arrest, two members of the two live crew themselves were arrested and charged with obscenity for performing songs from their album during a concert. Luther Campbell and crew member Chris Wong Wong were the two arrested. Did you have to stand in front of the judge? No. No, you didn't have to go up there? Yeah. Well, the judge was at his house. Oh, he was? Yeah. Take it easy? Yeah, hopefully he was listening to me so horny. One interesting aspect of two live crews arrest that many people may not be aware of is that it wasn't the first time the group had been targeted by law enforcement for their lyrics and performances. Who knows, it might be George Michaels. He might not be saying, I want your sex next year. You know what I'm saying? And then Guns N' Roses, and you know, people who sell a lot of records. Next thing you know, you know, Madonna, she got to put her clothes on her and share, you know? Before this arrest, the group had faced legal trouble in Alabama and Tennessee, where their concerts were also canceled due to obscenity concerns. And the group's history of legal issues helped to fuel the public debate over the arrest, which we'll dive into now. The ruling led to a nationwide debate about freedom of speech and the First Amendment Supporters of the ruling argue that the album's explicit content was inappropriate, especially for minors, while the other side argued that the court's decision was a violation of the First Amendment and an attack on expressing yourself through art. Who would ever think that here in the United States of America, we will be telling grown people what they can purchase and what they can't. We're opposed not against the group, we're opposed against the lyrics, the obscenity. In America, it should be freedom of speech. Right. But then at the same time, they say, watch what you say. I heard the album, I was at, and I went inside and I, I cried. I don't see anything wrong with it. If you don't want to listen to it, you don't have to. What makes you cry about it? The fact that they say that. About what, women? About women. It's the principle of the thing. Amen. You can speak the amendment right, the First Amendment right, protect them tonight. 
They were eventually acquitted of all charges, but the trial made them famous. Workmen were just putting the finishing touches on Luther Campbell's shiny new corporate offices here in Miami today. A new album and a European tour are in the works, all signs of a corporation with a bright future, if the CEO manages to stay out of jail. In order to make a determination, the court conducted a micro-analysis of the group's music, which involved breaking down the lyrics and performances of individual songs and analyzing them in detail. While visiting the results of the micro-analysis, the judge found the lyrics and performances of two live crew as offensive and lacking serious artistic value. However, the court also stated that the group's music also had comedic value, which was a factor that they took into account. Jurors have an unusual request. They want to know if they're allowed to laugh. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I don't think they want to cackle or laugh the entire time, but apparently some of them are having some physical pain in, in themselves. And I don't, I don't see why they shouldn't react whichever way they feel like that. The group's legal battles continued until 1992, when the Circuit Court of Appeals overturned the obscenity ruling. The is not guilty. There were plenty of cheers in the Florida courtroom today when the two live crew members were acquitted on obscenity charges. This decision established the new standard for artistic expression. This trial also showed the power of public opinion and the ability of U.S. citizens to influence the legal system. This case ended up being a major turning point for the group, despite initially being found guilty, and the group was cleared of all charges. The publicity from their trial only helped to fuel the group's success. The irony of all this is that since the controversy surrounding Two Live Crew began, sales of its records and singles have tripled. Some disc jockeys told me that the group never would have received this much attention had it not been singled out for censorship. Despite the legal challenges, the controversy surrounding Two Live Crew's music also helped to attract media attention. Their music continued to be popular, and their album, Band in the USA, became a massive hit. Due to them being a focal point on all the news stations, they were also played heavily on radio stations across the country. You know, there are people out there that say that all the, the arrests and the hoopla and all that are the best things ever could have happened to you guys. That's why y'all are, uh, are making money. It is actually helping us. We're selling more records. I mean, we're on a totally different level now than we were last year this time and you know just like I say when you entertain it the more you're in the spotlight that increases your value their album sales skyrocketed and they went on to become one of the most successful and controversial groups of the decade the group made millions of dollars and their as nasty as they want to be album was the first by a southern rap group to sell over a million copies and achieve platinum status the group's success helped pave the way for other artists to freely express themselves without fear of censorship. Two Live Crew's court case led to the development of a new legal standard for determining obscenity. Prior to the case, the Miller Test, which focused on whether the material appealed to the public interest and whether it was patently offensive, was used to determine obscenity. However, after the two live crew case, the test was modified to include a third factor, which considered whether the work had any serious artistic value. This modification makes it more difficult for prosecutors to prove that a work is obscene, and it provides more protection for other artists to freely express themselves without fear of censorship. Looking back decades later, Luther Campbell met with the media during the release of his book in 2015, 25 years after their trial. Campbell was asked to shed some light on the outcome of the case. Hip hop has been around, you know, uh, now that it's crossing over, you know, and uh, rock and roll is, is being phased out a little bit. You know, and a lot of white kids are listening to the music. You know, that's when the controversy came. Judge Gonzalez originally said that the music was obscene and 
we had to go back and get it overturned because if we didn't, then music what you hear right now today would have been totally different. We pushed back and the, the records got a little more graphic than uh, we wanted them to become. Uh, but, you know, we were in this thing called fighting for free speech. And there you have it. The story of two live cruise court case that ultimately led to their success in the music industry. Despite facing censorship and legal battles, the group persevered and helped pave the way for artistic freedom in the industry. Two live crews music and message continue to inspire and entertain audiences to this day. Leave a comment with your perspective on their style of music <laughs> and their rise to fame. Thank you for watching and subscribing to my channel. If you enjoyed this video, keep an eye out for my other content coming soon.